<laughs> Today we're off again. We're not going far. There's a water point about a mile. Know, yeah, about a mile, mile, just under a mile that way. So we're gonna fill it with water. And then depending if it rains, the forecast says we might get some showers at lunchtime. As you can see, it's not looking like showers, so not at the moment. How far we get today depends on the weather. I can hear an aeroplane. Oh, it depends helicopter. on how we feel as well. Yeah, so if it stays like this, go a bit further. Yeah. Uh, if it gets a bit cloudy, we'll just find the first mooring we like and stop there. Dylan's here. <laughs> you can hear him tapping about. You always know when Dylan's ready because he just starts badging the camera tripod about. He wants to go. <laughs> He's been wanting to go since seven o'clock this morning. And then it started raining. <laughs> <laughs> and raining. And raining. The thing is, on the day we arrived on the Lancaster Canal, we got a tweet from a viewer who was actually at the staircase locks. Yes. As you come up the Watch just coming in. navigation. And he actually tweeted us and says, Oh, you've brought the sunshine with you. It's past us. <laughs> Gone. We had a couple of nice days. And then it kind of started with showers, and then the rain started, and then the rain started. And it's been raining for... A week. <laughs> about a week. We haven't moved anywhere. <laughs> Literally, I've moved. It's now been just over a month. We've been on the boat a month. I know, it doesn't seem it, does it? It just... seems like just a month. <laughs> Where has that gone? So, but it's just, it's flown by, hasn't it? Yeah. It's absolutely flown by. So we're having a great time. We're settling in at last because I had a dodgy couple of weeks when we first started. Dodgy. But it's great because I'm now starting to forget what day it is, which is good. I'm not thinking about time. And that's a weird thing, isn't it? Just for you. Because my life used to revolve around appointments and, and deadlines and things like that. You, you've got to like adjust your life to the boat. It's all very well having this vision of carefree cruising and sunny days. And uh, there's still things that we forgot in there after like 14 years since we did it, 15 years. Yeah. Things like if somebody's, yes, I agree. Things like if somebody's doing something in the boat, you can't, you just got to wait. <laughs> so if Sean's cooking in the, in the galley or hoovering or anything like that, there's nothing you can do. You just got to sit and wait. Sit down and do wait it. till I've finished. <laughs> or if I've got the deck boards up on the stern and the engine, he's just got to wait. You can't go out with Dylan, he's just got to wait. That's right. Uh, so it's just little adjustments like that. We thought we'd not brought a lot of clothes. If anybody wants any clothes. Yes. <laughs> About 40 t-shirts to choose from. I've got one drawer <laughs> and a few coat hangers. He's got... Two, one drawer and, a, and one, a few coat hangers. One drawer, a cupboard. No, you share that cupboard. Some of your shoes are in that cupboard. What about the top shelf? Yeah, two of your... Maybe... Yeah. So, <laughs> Some of your None. shoes. Some of your shoes are in that cupboard. <laughs> if anybody wants any clothes, we might we could have like a a, a boat boot sale. Yeah, we could. We? Yeah, boat boot. Boat boot sale. Is anybody doing that? That sounds ace. So the original plan was we were just going to do the Lancaster from uh, south to north. We were yeah. going to just go all the way up and all the way back. And we weren't even bothered about the glass and arm because it had locks in it. We didn't want to do any locks <laughs> while we were up here. What? But apparently, glass and arm is quite nice. So glass we're going up there. Get some fuel on the way. You like that? Down the glass and branch. Because it was built along the natural lie of the land, the Lancaster Canal offers the longest stretch of lock free cruising in the country. It stretches 41 miles from Preston at the south end to Chewitt Field at the north, where the canal now ends, although it did used to go up to Kendall. But there are a few locks to be found. We're starting our journey today from the slightly scary sounding Cabus Nook and we'll be heading north through the countryside towards Golgate. There we'll take a left onto the Glasson branch, down six locks and into Glasson Dock on the mouth of the River Loon. 
Before we do anything else, we need some water. We've got a 350 litre stainless steel fresh water tank. It's under the well deck at the front of the boat. And when it's full, it, it normally lasts us about a week for washing, showering, laundry, cooking, and of course, dozens of cups of coffee. The canals have got water points spread across the network and they're usually only a few miles apart. So it's always worth topping up when you get the chance. And we're coming up to a tap just now. It's really easy to fill up. We've got our own hose pipe. We just give it a rinse, connect it to the tap, give the hose a good wash through, and then put it in the opening to the water tank. And then it's just waiting anything from 20 minutes to an hour and a half sometimes, depending on the water pressure. No idea where we are. Ha ha ha. I have no idea where we are. Ha. It's sunny blue skies and it's warm and it's not windy yes it's not gonna last is it it's no. gonna it's gonna like chuck it down before end of day give it 24 hours <laughs> we are at Goldgate Marina and we're not far from the top of the Glasson branch that's where we're going today uh, the Glasson branch comes off the Lancaster Canal it's about two and a half miles long and it links down to the sea via the Loon estuary, the River Loon. It's six locks, two and a half miles. Uh, as you get down to the six lock, it, it kind of straightens out. It's, uh, it's like saltings and the marshlands and everything. And then it opens out into Glass and Dock at the bottom. We've heard a lot of good things about the Glass and Dock. Apparently it's beautiful. It's supposed to be really nice. And if it stays like this, even better. Are you ready? Mm. Come on then. So the locks on the Glasson are actually very similar to the ones on the Leeds Liverpool Canal. You don't need any windlasses, which I've just learned by bringing the windlass to lock one and I didn't need it. So these are the uh, handles to empty the uh, water into the lock. They're slightly different on the other side. So with these you need a British Waterways key instead of an anti-vandal lock. All we do is put the key in, unlock the anti-vandal, slip it off there leave the key in because you're going to have to lock it in a second and then you just turn this handle anti-clockwise to raise the gates and clockwise to lock them don't forget <laughs> whatever you do to make sure the locking mechanism is in place before you let go of the handle so 
So on the other gates, the paddles are a little bit different. Instead of them going vertically up and down, this one pulls across and it pulls the paddle on the lock gate open that way. So we unclip that first of all, and then again, wind it like this, and put the clip back in. The Glasson branch runs through some gorgeous countryside, through the Condon Valley for two and a half miles from the junction with the Lancaster Canal down to Glasson Dock. It was opened in 1826, a few years after the main line opened, and it provides the Lancaster Canal with a link to the sea, especially for towns like Kendall, Lancaster and Preston. Although we're only going as far as the marina, which is just before the seventh lock, which goes into the sea dock. So I'm loving the Glasson. Uh, we're at lock five. Have you seen that movie? I think it's the greatest Christmas movie ever. Home Alone 2. Not Home Alone 1, Home Alone 2. It is the greatest Christmas movie ever. Uh, so you know when the baddies come to the house and he's kind of preparing the house with all the booby traps? Yeah? And he gets the grease and he puts the grease over the ladders so that when he jumps on the ladders he kind of swings and falls off. Somebody has done that to all the lock handles, all the paddle handles, on every lock, all the way down from lock one. Every time you touch any of the handles, you get that horrible grimy mess. And all the mechanism and everything's got like oil and stuff on it, which is it's cool, but it looks like somebody's deliberately just gone on every single handle and just brushed this stuff on. It's absolutely horrible. Cheers for that, whoever's done that. So anyway, all six locks have been done. We're now on this final bit. This is like a straight line that takes us down into Glass and Dock. So all around us is uh, like just old marshland and farmland. It's very flat, very open. Beautiful. It is very nice. But we can see the dock in front of us. Just gotta go under this last bridge. And we'll see you there. Here we are. My glass of basin. There she is. All mowed up, lovely. And it's quite nice down here, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Mobile signal's not very good, uh, but the booster on the internet's doing well, so we've got some decent internet. Uh, just across from us, we've got the chandlery. There's uh, gas and diesel and water that you can get there. It's a nice little shop. And there's all the facilities uh, for the boaters, if you want them, just at the other side of the basin. There's the lock that goes down into Glass and Dock and then out into the Loon estuary. I like saying Loon. 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 <laughs> We're starving. I don't know about you, are you starving? Yeah, it's been a long day. It's only been two and a half miles, but it's been a long day, hasn't it? <laughs> it's a long day. Six locks, and I tell you, they're not easy locks. And they were all set against us because the locks are supposed to be emptied after you've used them. So we've been coming down, so every single one, except one, where we, yeah. we passed another boat. Every single one was empty, so we had to fill the lock and then go down it. Uh, so when we go back up, it's going to be even worse, isn't it? No, because they're all going to be empty. Yeah, but then you've got to fill the lock, and they got empty. come out of it, and then you've got to empty it again. Don't know why. Chuckle bunnies. Chuckle bunnies. So <laughs> we're going to have a little explore and get something to eat. So do you want to have a look round Glasson with us? Ooh, it's a nice little place. Come on then.
Classen Dock was once the largest port in the northwest, importing cotton, sugar, spices, and slaves from Africa and the Indies. But times change, and so has the dock. It's now a scheduled monument, a quiet village and marina that's long since swapped the cargo and slaves for leisure boating. While I was down in the village, the guy in the shop said, you've got to go to the top of Tithe Barn Hill. You can see Blackpool Tower. And I was like, no chance. Blackpool's miles and miles away. It's not going to happen. So I got the camera and I've come up here, top of Tithe Barn Hill. It's on the junction of Bodie Hill. And sure enough, the, just, the view just opens out. It's like 180 degree. And you can see literally from Blackpool all the way around Morecambe Bay, all the way around up towards the Lake District. It's an amazing view. These maps behind me, you can stand and you can look in the direction and it shows you what you can see from there. It's brilliant. If you're planning to hire a narrowboat on the Lancaster Canal, it's well worth checking if you're allowed to bring it down onto the Glass and Branch. Because a lot of hire boat companies don't allow it, and that's a shame. Because the views down here in the village, and from up here of Morecambe Bay and the high fells of the Lake District, are just spectacular. Give the wind, it is a little bit breezy. Uh, in fact, it's quite a bit breezy. In fact, it's been a bit blowy all day. So when we were coming down the flight of locks down towards Glass and Dock, Sean discovered that his bow thruster weren't working properly. And the reason being, there was a load of weed in one of the locks. And as we came through, he was using his bow thruster like he does. <laughs> and some of the weed has been sucked into the bow thruster and it's all caught up in the mechanism in the bow thruster tube and it's actually poking out you can see it coming out of the sides of the bow thruster so I've drawn the short straw vest and pants and I'm gonna try and get this stuff out of the bow thruster plan A is to do it without falling in let's see if we need plan B Right, so plan A, not so successful. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff in there, but I could just, just about reach the grill for the bow thruster and it was packed, absolutely packed solid. So I've pulled a lot of it away, but I can just feel that there's just so much in there. So plan B. It is really deep went right the way down to the bottom of the pole so I'm going in there's a protective grill covering the tube that houses the bow thruster but the long thin strands of weed have really stuck themselves in there pretty solidly so the only option is to get in there and pull them out by hand. There you go. <laughs> How to unblock a bow thruster tube. It's actually quite warm in here. Are you coming in? No. <laughs> you ready for a cup of tea now? <laughs> It feels more like a seaside holiday than a canal moor in here. It's hard to imagine that we're only two and a half miles from the main line of the Lancaster Canal. It just feels really isolated, out at the end of the line, hidden away from civilization in a village that seems frozen in time. 
It's hard to imagine that this was once a thriving hub for the northwest, thousands of tons of cargo passing between the canal and the sea every week. I'm really glad we came down here, it's been a lovely few days, and this sunset for our final night is just amazing. Good morning. Morning. It's very early. About half six. It's Wednesday morning and the reason we're up so early today is we've got to go. We've had our seven days here at Glass and Marina. Yeah. Do that face again. <laughs> we've had our seven days so we've got to move. Looking forward to that aren't you? I don't know because I really like it here. Nah. But I'm kind of ready to see other things now. Yeah I am. So it's been a brilliant week. It is really nice. If you if you get the chance, come down the Glasson Branch and stay down here for a couple of days. It's really nice. It's not like there's a lot to do, but there's everything you need. So in the chandlery across the other side of the marina, uh, there's the shop and there's all the services that you need there. There's yeah. water. There's water on this point yeah. and some electricity as well if you've got some cards. Just in the village, there's the shop and there's a cafe and there's a pub. You've got to visit the smokehouse. We spent a bit too much in the smokehouse. Way too much money. Really nice. The bacon, the smoked bacon. It's smoked cheese. I love smoked cheese. Smoked fish. Yeah, loads of smoked fish, which is all brought in fresh, of course. Yeah. But for us, that's it. We've got to go now. So we're heading back up the six locks towards the main line of the Lancaster Canal. It's time to go. You know that feeling when you set off home after a really nice holiday? That's pretty much how we're feeling today. It's a bit sad, but we've had a great time and I know that we'll be back at some point in the future. But the sun's out, there's loads more for us to see as we leave Glasson and make our way back up the branch towards the main line of the Lancaster Canal. The first stop is going to be back at Goldgate Marina. We need some fuel and we need to empty the waste tanks. Back to reality, eh? Uh, a couple of miles short of Lancaster and behind me is the El Sand point which we used a few minutes ago. You don't want to see that one though do you? Uh, Sean's just nipped off, there's a spar about 500 yards down the road so he's just nipped off to get some essentials and then we're going to be off again. Uh, it's also the last place you can get diesel, uh, canal side anyway, before you go further up past Lancaster so we thought we'd top up didn't know how much diesel we had to be honest and it's like a self-service thing so it's like one way you like at the petrol station where you put your credit card in and you just kind of do it so we're all excited got the debit card out and put it in and it says get a supervisor and it's like there's nobody here so we went up to the office and supervisor's not here till seven o'clock tonight and it's only three o'clock we don't fancy hanging about so we kind of we did the dipstick test on the diesel tank and we're like three quarters full so we don't need any diesel, we're fine, we're all right for now. And we've got 20 litres or so, packed away, stowed away if we need it. So, as soon as Sean comes back, we're going to get off again. It's quite nice here. As we're getting further up the Lancaster, I mean, the sun is helping, to be honest. And the next three or four days, it's forecast to be raining. So, we're kind of enjoying cruising on this, uh, this last day of sunshine. So, three or four days of rain, and then we're off into Lancaster. Next time on Britain by Narrowboat, we explore the historic city of Lancaster. We cross the stunning Loon Aqueduct on our way to the coastal village of Hest Bank, and things get a bit too much as I open up about my struggles with mental health. Mm -hmm.